When something comes along that as thoroughly exceeds my expectations in so many areas as Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales, it reminds me why I got into video games in the first place. Far from a mere single-player afterthought slapped onto a multiplayer collectible card game, CD Projekt Red has given us a sweeping, complex, emotional story with memorable characters, excellent voice acting, and varied, exciting card battles all along the way. The chase is on! I was most blown away by the writing. Set just before the Witcher RPG trilogy during the second Nilfgaard War, you take on the role of the dauntless, dynamic, many-layered queen Meave of Lyria and Rivia. Every step of her journey is complicated by an overwhelming enemy, abundant political intrigue, and the kind of gut-twisting, no-right-answer moral choices the Witcher series has become known for. Are you willing to sacrifice your personal honor to preserve your basic human decency? Are you willing to do what's best for your soldiers at the expense of a possibly instrumental alliance? This tale recognizes no distinction between good or evil, only tough, emotional, imperfect compromises that stuck with me hours after I'd made them. I was accompanied on this journey by a cast of multi-layered, diverse, and interesting aides-de-camp who could stand right beside or even outshine the best of the best party members from more traditional RPGs. Your Grace, the man's a brigand. From the irreverent bandit Captain Gascon, I transform into a creature that's half man, half dashund, to the fanatically pacifist sorcerist Isbel, they're all more than meets the eye and have unique reactions to the decisions you make that can lead to them opening up more or even departing your service. In fact, I found it impossible to keep everyone happy, adding a tangible component of ongoing consequence to my behavior. And it's more than just missing out on another drinking buddy when someone leaves, since many party members can offer special solutions to certain story events and quest dilemmas that allow you to come out of them with much less blood on your shirt. I adored the organic feeling reactivity of this system, and how it rewarded or punished me for the values I chose to stand for. And following in the rear, the bandits, bound in chains. <laughs> The quests themselves and accompanying dialogue are written every bit as well as The Witcher 3, and the card-based battle system it all revolves around is a lot of fun as well. Far from playing a couple hundred rounds of standard rules Gwent, nearly every encounter has some kind of unique twist that's satisfying to overcome. Some commanders have the ability to immediately resurrect any cards you kill, so the only way to win is to whittle them down with non-lethal attacks. Certain story battles require you to destroy a heavily armored gatehouse before you can attack the units behind it. And the level of deck customization, especially later on once you get the ability to recruit special cards like Dwarven Auxiliaries and Skellige Mercenaries, means you can always change things up if you're bored or a particular battle is giving you a really hard time. Particularly interesting were the various optional puzzle fights scattered around Thronebreaker's lovely hand-painted world maps, which require you to accomplish something really unorthodox using a specific set of cards in a limited number of turns. You might be asked to get a certain card to a certain side of the board using movement abilities, or to raise a specific card's power to a certain number. Some of them were really legitimately tough, taking me close to an hour to come up with the right solution. But it was always so, so satisfying when it clicked. It's much quicker to list the few things Thronebreaker gets wrong than the many, many things it does delightfully well. Aside from being one of the best written RPGs I've played in years, the varied ways it keeps its card-based combat from stagnating across a 40-ish hour campaign are admirably clever and well thought out. Deck building and some light RPG elements that allow upgrading specific cards and giving a feeling of progression to your two-dimensional army, and expertly crafted companions that aren't shy about leaving you out in the cold create a satisfying, meaningful feedback system for your actions. If you like a good fantasy RPG at all, even if you're not normally a collectible card game person, do yourself a favor and treat your inner card-slinging monarch to this one. For more gritty tactical combat, check out our reviews of Pathfinder Kingmaker and Space Hulk Tactics. And for everything else, stick with IGN.